Hey guys, uh, we're back, and uh, with me is uh, MP. Let me, yeah. Hi, MP. Good Hello. to see you. How's it going? Good? Yeah. How are you? Good. Good. Really good. Yeah. So, MP is from uh, Golem, our partner at Xerox Hack. And uh, MP is here to tell you more about growing uh, the community. Mm -hmm. um, MP, would you like to share a presentation or are you just going to? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I think, oh, yeah, I, I do have the option now to share a screen. One second. OK, awesome. cool. Yeah, it's here. It's here. You can see it well. Otherwise, yeah. let me know. Yeah, I can see it well. OK, then yeah. I'm ready to go. Great. So the stage is yours. Enjoy. Cool. Hello, everyone. I am Maria Paula. I work as an advisor at Golem, and I handle all the part of ecosystem reach out and uh, help organize our hackathon, set up the bounties and whatnot. Since uh, on my spare time and when we were not in COVID times, I actually founded ETH Berlin, which is one of the largest Ethereum hackathons and ran it for through uh, two years and very looking forward to uh, getting that project started again once we go back to normal. But now it's time for another uh, online hackathon and I prepared some stuff for you about how we build the ecosystem in Golem and I hope it's helpful. Um, so yeah, about Golem. So Golem is a marketplace for digital idol resources. It is an open source protocol, decentralized and, sen and censorship resistant. Through it, people can request uh, to rent digital resources, including idle uh, computing power. And uh, you rent it from other people uh, or you know data centers or whoever joins the network since it's completely open. And then uh, you can pay them and they get, can get paid in GLM, which is our uh, currency. And it's an ERC-20 currency built on top of Ethereum, of course. And in this case, actually, our payment driver is built on layer two of Ethereum because I don't have to explain you after yesterday what happens when Ethereum gets congested. So let, let's keep that and let's try to be reactive to the current t crazy, unprecedented times. So as I was telling you, uh, Golem is accessible, reliable, open access, and completely censorship resistant. We also we are also completely permissionless. You don't need uh, you don't need GLM to access the marketplace um, if you don't want to rent computing power. If you do want to rent computing power because you're an application developer or a requester needing to render an image or whatever, you of course need to acquire that GLM, but otherwise, you know, you can always join the network. Um, it's pretty cool because uh, basically, we built a protocol, a very, very strong foundation that is uh, developer friendly and uh, hopefully in the future end user friendly as well. So you can you can simply access, start building your application, connect to Golem and request computing power. The nodes that give you the computing power are people like you and me with laptops, uh, people with GPUs, people with data centers, you know, we are not uh, dictating anything about who should provide and which kind of uh, hardware should they have. Uh, right now, of course, because we're in the very early stages of our uh, second implementation, the support is a little bit limited, but it's not meant to be limited. We aim to uh, diversify and to be able to adapt Golem to any kind of digital resource. So as I said, <laughs> after after yesterday, I don't want to explain what happens with Ethereum when it gets congested and when gas hits uh, four digits. But uh, but we, we always have this in mind. So we started building the, the payment layer 
for this new protocol completely on layer two. So we were, we were working with the ZK Sync payment driver, uh, and you don't have to worry about <laughs> black zone events. Um, so yeah, Golem goes a, a long way, and by a long way, I'm telling you about the inception of Ethereum. Many of you haven't been there, but uh, you know maybe some of you have, and it's always really refreshing to uh, touch base with the OG. So if you're there, just uh, reach out. Then I'll sh share our contact need details. So basically, Golem was born around the same time as DevCon Zero in Ethereum. And we thought that Ethereum was the best platform to build the protocol with, especially the payment layer that we are uh, that we have built, because Ethereum is open, the community is super strong, and you know it, it is today the strongest developer community that I have ever seen, at, at least. So yeah, we presented alongside them in the very first DevCon. And then in 2016, after our idea of getting funded by the original DAO, um, well, you know, ended up not happening, we decided to go into a crowdfunding where we sold our token that at the time was uh, called GMT. And then in 2018, we were one of the first applications that launched mainnet. Everything was great. People were excited because, you know, finally Ethereum had applications on mainnet and it was amazing. But the, uh, uh, the implementation of the protocol that we had back, back then wasn't very user friendly. And of course, it was built on layer one of Ethereum as well. So there were a few challenges on onboarding people so we weren't we we did launch to mainnet then we launched a task api as well and it did it did really well to us but then at some point we realized that this wasn't the best we could offer and the best we could offer was actually something a little bit different completely dev friendly and user friendly so we decided to start building a new code base around 2000 like end of 2019 and in 2021, we launched again to mainnet this new platform built on layer two. So um, hopefully the problems of the past have already been long overcome and our developers are really happy. So, uh, you know, it's really a cool time to build on top of Golem right now. So right now I'm going to talk a little bit about what, why are we you know, taking it a little bit slow, slow and uh, also very mindfully, we are building lasting infrastructure that is meant to serve a lot of people for a very long time. So whereas I find the model of constantly iterating and not being scared to fail really useful and it has served us in Golem and we are building as well that way. We're also being really mindful in the way that we grow the ecosystem and, uh, and match the product stage. Uh, so we can strive to, you know, not doing some kind of like flash initiatives, but more of, mar uh, more of a marathon. So uh, yeah. Basically, when we set up off to build the Golem in 2014, we wanted uh, the developer community to be completely free from centralized platforms. So, you know, Google Cloud, uh, AWS, Azure, those are centralized platforms. They are bound to arbitrary censorship, as you have been able to see in the past. It's not cool to get the platform, whatever you think about the people that are getting the platform, it's, you know, it can happen to anyone for any reason if you don't, you know, adhere to terms and conditions that are not always, you know, righteous. So we have to think of building reliable infrastructure that doesn't depend on a single company. It's also important to, you know, demonopolize a little bit. Uh, so our, con our, our conviction, you know, hasn't changed. We still build the same thing a decentralized marketplace for digital resources that anyone and everyone can access. So, and of course, 
we keep on innovating as the tech industry keeps advancing so we need to incorporate those learnings into the protocol and make sure that we're building something that it's not only cutting edge but that people love using and can use with a relatively low learning curve so yeah uh, here you know golem is open source and open source software lasts forever it's a marathon and not a sprint i wanted to highlight this uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about open source maintenance through the talk. So yeah, just keep this in mind. So when it comes to our uh, contributors, we also think long term. We want developers to be able to work on tools and, you know, for these tools to live forever. Open source uh, applications are a public good and should be treated as such, should be made to last and we should be able to build lasting code that is able to adapt to them and it, uh, the applications should also be able to adapt to innovation so it sort of fits everything fits together in the same open source happy puzzle we should all be mindful that uh, of course we need to seize the opportunities that come our way especially in markets uh, and periods of uh, high speed and high innovation like this one right now but we we should also be mindful and know that we want to build lasting relationships that software is not something that you can discard and you know it matters to build uh, relationships based on the way uh, uh, that we think about the code. So yeah, uh, just uh, so you know, some of the oldest software in the world is still running embedded in critical infrastructure. So you know, you want to be be sure that the platform you're building with uh, and the language that you're building with and the contributors you're building, you're building it uh, have a long term commitment with the space. So building open source is about contributors, maintainers, and core. And these can in these roles can can switch, and you know a lot of people can take different roles as well. Uh, at Golem, we consider ourselves right now to be the core team, but that doesn't mean that in the future we will become maintainers of the of the protocol and just that and uh, of course you know this matters because when you uh, set to build something and you set to build a team as well you are thinking of different milestones and different expectations and once those have been met and your protocol is built and ready to go into sort of a maintenance phase because bear in mind again open source development never ever stops and it's always a work in progress so then, you know, the, the core team can uh, become the maintainer team and maybe another team building core infrastructure will become the, the core team. Nevertheless, you know, we understand that we are temporary, but the software isn't. So this is the, the way that we want to, you know, grow our community as well. And we will always be supporting in a way or the other building or stewarding or funding or advising. So yeah, we're here to stay. So contributing to open source. Um, also, I don't, I don't have to tell you how important this is. Open source is built by a community and the software is only a part of it open source is meant to last as i said and it's meant to be improved uh, from throughout the time uh, the open source community is very large um, if you check one of the most famous open source projects like linux or wordpress they have given the world great opportunities uh, so we want to continue this legacy we want to continue building strong communities like theirs and platforms that are able to continue throughout the time so in order to do this we believe that scaling should be done mindfully and not slowly but you know taking the time to find the right community retention to make sure that people are happy, 
to make sure that people are incentivized, to make sure that the documentation is the best documentation that we can provide because it's the entryway to your protocol. So um, all of this is summarized here in my slide in why, what, how, and when. And uh, the one is now, actually, we're ready and we have been ready for a long time and doing hackathons since December. So you can join Golem and build with us and you will see also the platform evolve and uh, share uh, the current limitations in order to allow you to create even more than you have created now. So I, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm just going to go briefly uh, around this because I don't want to <laughs> stay uh, to to hang up on slides. Um, so open source maintenance is sometimes quite unkind. It's not really rewarding. It's also not very sexy. When you're building something from scratch, you're thinking of innovating. You're thinking of you know disrupting and whatnot. When you're maintaining, you sort of tend to become the janitor. But this doesn't this doesn't mean that open source maintenance is not as important as the initial build on the contrary as i said uh, some of the oldest open source software has been around since 1956 and is still used for critical infrastructure such as financial instruments or scientific computing was a you know what was once elegant and cutting edge code might end up being labeled uh, differently otherwise if it's not maintained so it's really important to put focus on this role and to grow the community mindfully so that people also have this uh, role in mind the question on how we value digital infrastructure needs to start at the people who write the code from scratch or that maintain it and this you know this is all really important and we need to make sure that all everyone is getting credited that everyone is incentivized and promoted and that their job feels is it is valuable because these are the people that will continue the legacy for decades and decades and decades so we want to invite the creators to join the Golem ecosystem, and this is the way that we are actually doing it. Um, first, why do I say creators? Because we're living in a creator economy right now. I don't know if you saw this around the internet, but the creator economy uh, sort of got started around 2009 with the YouTube boom, but it has diversified, and anyone that's contributing uh, to, you know, to media, to social media, to, I don't know, art, uh, writing, and especially software is considered a creator. You create things when you code. It's not only that you are developing. The act of creation is very powerful, and creators uh, are different than consumers because creators both produce and consume and they have agency over their product and agency out over other people's products so creators are ordinary people whose everyday actions create value and every time you push a commit you create value so i don't have to explain you how important it is for you to think of yourself as a creator i think so why join our ecosystem um let's keep the part that our tech is actually amazing and our community is super fun and if you don't believe me you can go to the discord and check it out and um, let's keep the part as well that it's super interesting it, uh, important to not get the platform you already know all of these but uh, most importantly when we set up to build uh, this new protocol that uh, that you're building on top of uh, we decided to build it completely dev friendly and on an iterative feedback basis, which means that every uh, after every release, we get in, uh, get in touch with the developers that have been contributing or that have been building on top of Golem or you know doing bounties, and we ask them for their feedback and then we implement it on the coming release. So we really tailor made uh, tailor make everything to make sure that we never lose sight uh, on who we're building for. 
Um, incentives in this sense matter a lot. It's not only about, of course, monetary incentives, to, uh, even though most of the incentives are actually monetary, but we provide a support network as well. We provide a community, we provide communications, but let's talk a little bit about our ongoing pro programs. We have the GLM rewards program where non-technical and technical alike can earn uh, rewards in our native token GLM for what? For moderating Telegram, for making memes, for uh, you know, develop continuing to develop an app that they build on a hackathon, for building widgets, for helping the community, for building documentation. I mean, possibilities are really end endless. We would also like to invite you to you know decentralize the sharing the mission of Column and host your own meetups. Um, you know, record uh, YouTube videos, anything, and you can get rewarded. Uh, you just have to reach out to us. We also have the hackathons, uh, just like this one, where actually we found we have found a lot of talent, and uh, hackathons have given us a huge thing that it was the first feeling that we are actually building an ecosystem beyond building the corporate uh, platform. So uh, I hackathons are extremely important for us and uh, they're the step, first stepping stone to build a developer community. We also, of course, have small bounties for when we don't have big events as hackathon and micro grants. So, you know, after the hackathon, uh, we might choose a, a team or two or maybe three, I don't know, to continue building their application and they will also get uh, not only incentivized monetarily by this, but they will also get spotlight in our website, spotlight in our documentation, and of course, uh, you know, always uh, some mentorship from our developers. Security bugs are obviously important to us. Uh, so we do have a bug bounty competition and you can find it in our website as well. We also, and for special occasions, sometimes because we're also building some infrastructure and some applications ourselves or need to test particular things. So uh, like right now that we are actually building with a research institute for organic chemistry in Poland, we are trying to do some scientific computations. So we need a lot of providers. So normally or you know in the event that we need a lot of computing power because we have a hackathon so then we would set as well provider bounties where not only the people earn glm from the requesters but we would also add some intensives on top to make sure that people have everything they need especially at such early stages of the marketplace where you know people are just getting onboarded and support a and supply and demand might be limited we don't want to limit anyone so we make sure that we are very hands-on mm -hmm. and keep everything very healthy and of course we do have rewarded feedback sessions you know for doing service uh, interviewing with our developers and our ux designers you might also get rewarded because actually the feedback, as I mentioned before, matters since it's going to go straight into the next iteration or of Column or the following one. So um, this is just a screenshot of one of my favorite things, awesome Golem. This is where the ecosystem lives right now, uh, besides our website. And we aggregate everything that you produce and everything that we produce because we are as I said, one ecosystem, and we should start behaving like one. So the Awesome Golem guide serves as the master list to uh, everything Golem. Some of the projects built on Golem are, uh, so basically I made a selection of some of the projects built on Golem here, but uh, since this is our third hackathon right now, we have many more. Uh, these are just uh, projects that were built on the last two hackathons. So, uh, and uh, we have about five winners per hackathon. So just like dive into Awesome Golem and find your own. These are examples. So decentralized machine learning was one. Uh, then we have a very fun chess on Golem that if you love chess, 
just go to our chat because people are playing against Golem all the time. And we are also preparing some cool surprises here. Then on our last hackathon, we had an online IDE uh, inspired in photogrammetry for a game that access uh, the former site of Chernobyl. And they created a photogrammetry app for Golem. And finally, we also love developer tooling submissions. So this test fuzzing framework that finds security holes in software was super exciting for us as well. So yeah, what can you build with Golem? Basically anything, you know, right now, as I mentioned, since we have launched mainnet about two months ago, of course, there's a bit of limitation, but this limitation can and will be overcome with the developers and thanks to developers contributions. So join the network, try to build what you can build, try to build what you want to build as well, give us feedback and uh, you will see how cool it is to progress uh, to progress from you know the current limitations and overcome them together and your product developing further uh, alongside the protocol and final next steps um so this is all very cool but we are just at the gates of this ecosystem so how do we go from here um of course, we will have more hackathons uh, right now after this one, because uh, we have done three. We're going to take a look at everything that you guys have built and see what we can uh, support building, what we can uh, learn from you. So, you know, just like keep visiting our website and our social media because you will find more activities like this one. Uh, we will have a grants program uh, in the future as well. We will have more developer bounties. Every once in a while, we actually um, let an Easter egg go on a Gitcoin and we ask people to build it. So that's super fun as well. We also will have community bounties uh, for non-technical fellows and uh, just people that want to join in a relatively easy way. We obviously are improving the platform constantly and are developing use cases at the same time. So, and finally, I wanted to make sure that uh, we talk about what we can support you with. That is not only, uh, that comes after you win uh, the prizes and you submit your hackathon projects. So we will definitely be uh, there for you, you know, spreading the word about your project, uh, advising you technically, you can join sessions with our developers as well you know we, uh, of course we can support with funding and in the future we're planning to support with a business model and development as well um i guess that's it for now so um i'm really looking forward for your submissions please reach out if you have any issues and uh, thank you so much for this um yeah bye uh thanks a lot mp uh i really enjoyed your perspective on uh, growing oh. the community i dropped all the links uh that you mentioned uh, in the description so if uh, for everyone watching you can check them out and just click it uh, click click there and then i'll see you later at uh, 4 p.m for the nft discussion panel yeah i'll see you it's gonna be super fun bye awesome.